Howdy folks, today I'm heading over into Manhattan to meet with Leica for a briefing on the new M10 monochrome. For those of you who don't really get who this camera's for, let me explain. This circle is all of the photographers out there. When you pick up a rangefinder, it's just different. It's slow, it's mechanical, it's manual focus, and the way it all works is just different to an SLR or a mirrorless camera. So let's be generous and say, 50% of photographers might find that interesting and 50 will be like, no, nope, I need autofocus and the modern features. Then you have to think about the price. A Leica M camera new with a basic fixed focal length, manual focus lens, the combo is gonna cost you at least $10,000. So there's not that many people who can justify that price. So let's say there's this little slice of the pie left that are, uh, you know, your doctors, lawyers, and dentists who can justify it and do love the shooting process. Then, for a monochrome, you need to be willing to say, I never want to get color information from my photos. I only ever will shoot black and white images with this, and I like the process, and I can justify the price. That leaves you with this tiny little bread slice of the pie here. And that's who this camera is for. for. So for you 36 people who fit this bill, this video is for you. This is the original Leica M monochrome and it's my one. It dates back to 2012 and it's based on the M9 body with the Kodak CCD sensor, but the sensor has had the color sensor array removed, so then it only captures black and white. The follow-up to this was in 2015 and it's based on the Type 240 M camera and it uses a 24 megapixel CMOS sensor that also has no color array on it. And the new guy announced today that we're here to check out has a body that's the exact same as the Leica M10P but with some paint job differences and that happens to be my favorite all-time camera to shoot with but this one has an all-new 40 megapixel monochrome sensor that's been designed from the ground up to be monochrome rather than simply taking a color sensor and taking off the filter so let's check it out this is the new guy, also got the 90mm f1.5 lens that they just announced. Essentially, well, I'm not going to run through all the specs, but it, it's an M10P with the touchscreen and the shutter and everything that we liked from that. Same battery, all the same accessories, but it's got a brand new, never been used before, apparently 40 megapixel built from the ground up monochrome sensor. So it's not the same one that's in the Q2, it's not the same as in the SL2 it's its own brand new sensor. It's coming in at 8,300, and as you watch this, it's available to purchase right now. So far, it looks really nice. Maybe my favorite thing on paper about this is that it's now got a base ISO of 160 rather than 320. So we're gonna take a walk for about an hour. I have the previous generation. This is, I think they call it the 240 monochrome, and mine, which is the original monochrome. So we have three generations, and let's see how the files show up on each of them. Okay, so putting the new M10 monochrome together with the new 90mm f1.25, this is a pricey little combo. You're looking at $20,000 here, and to get the most of it, you really need the VisoFlex, but from what I can see, the files look gorgeous. Are you getting the, the way you focus with a rangefinder, like how it works? Kind of, but kind of not really. I'm it's just proud of that shot for some reason. Yeah, it's nice. So when you focusing back at this guy, right in the center, you'll see an overlay. Once they line up, you'll see there's the little box in the middle. Right now, yeah. it's close to having road in focus. Wait. Then focus <laughs> back and forward. Once you see that line up, whatever's in the box is in focus. Nope, that's your aperture. Oh. This one. Ah. So you see, it's got that little knockout. You can actually put your thumb in there and then just they think of everything. Then this one has an EVF. So when you put it up to your eye, 
this will turn on. And then when you start to focus, it'll zoom in to your focus point so you can actually see it going into oh, focus. Oh, shit. What? Like any camera on the market. Whoa. Tricky, huh? Yeah, but... I force her to cool. do this as well so she appreciates why I'm always like, no, stay really still. Don't move. Don't, don't breathe. Don't move at all. You've got like two mil of focus on something like this. So it looks great. If you got it right on the eye, I would be amazed because it's so tricky. So you're probably a little bit oh, in front. A little bit, yeah. It looks like the strap of my camera is in, but it just takes practice. But good, good attempt. This thing is kind of heavy compared to the old one. <laughs> You, know, you do these bokeh tests where you have the lights in the background to show how diffuse they get. You can barely tell that there's a tree there, let alone the lights that are meant to be on them. I'm actually going to stop down a little so we can get some semblance of actual lights in the background. Now, as well as all of these cool cameras to play with, Leica also had the brand new Summerlux 90mm f1.5 lens that was just announced at the end of 2019 for us to check out. This thing is a beast. It's using the exact same body as the 75mm Noctilux. It weighs in at over a kilogram, and this bad boy is 13,000 US dollars before tax. So it eclipses the bodies by far. To get the most of this shooting wide open, we're going to need to use the VisoFlex EVF adapter that gives us the option to punch into 100% to confirm our focus. Can you say cover shot? Got this right? Yeah? No? Okay. It's all on the camera. <laughs> Those Leica fans out there, the original, no, the original, the second, and the new monochrome, the weight, 16, 18, 21, the 90, 1.5, or the 50 Arpo. Which camera and body? You can choose one body, one lens combo. Leave me a comment, which would be your setup. I'm kind of leaning to the 90, but the 50 up is a dream lens. It makes me feel like I'm the greatest photographer in the world. <laughs> I think a lot of the value of Leica's is the, pro the enjoyment you get from going out to shoot rather than editing the files, sharing them on social media, sharing them with friends, or necessarily even printing them. It's the having it in your hand, spending the day shooting, feeling like the world's greatest photographer. Yeah. It's a big premium, but that's what you're getting, I think, from a Leica more than the results, because you have to admit, a brand new Sony kit for 2000 can get you as good results but the process is just not the same. Some people will prefer the Sony, but that little slice of pie that I showed you before, those people much prefer this process and that's what you're paying for. Now, I'm sure most of you are familiar with the concept that higher resolution sensors don't perform as well as lower ones in terms of high ISO and how clean the files are. However, time takes its toll. So looking at the 18 megapixel CCD or the 24 megapixel uh, Leica 246 monochrome compared to this brand new one, even though it's much higher resolution at 40 megapixels, it's much newer technology. Taking a look at my CCD based sensor here at 6400 ISO, you can see it really was quite noisy. Here looking at the new guy at 4000, and 8,000 and even 12 and a half thousand, right up there, it's still cleaner 12 and a half than my old one is at 6,400. So those extra years of technological development have really helped it out. Okay, See, that's it. All right, I'm it so is... glad to hear someone who isn't 100 years old like me gets it's, it. It's like, wow. 
It's I a did that. Exactly. It's That's a rewarding me. thing, right? That there's... But then a part of it is like, oh yeah, actually the camera's pretty awesome too. But then it's also the nine that were slightly out of focus. Well, that was also me. But yeah. it's that aspect of, well, well, there's a mechanical part that you're actually engaging yeah. with it on a one-to-one. -one, but then it feels like it's a matter of refinement, right? It's not just wait for the firmware for this to get better. It's I yeah. need to improve. It's kind of more of a craft than just a hobby if that it's makes like sense. It's like sharpening your knife type of thing. It's like, you know, just skill sets. Yeah, okay. I just, you know. Give me the camera. <laughs> Put your knife away. <laughs> no, I get it. I get it. I get it. Here's a few shots from the 90mm Summer Lux. I really love how this is rendering, probably more than the 75 Noctilux, but you definitely will need that EVF to nail focus if you're shooting wide open. It's um, it's just the nature of this kind of thing. You can't do much in an hour. I wanted to bring you guys out and do our own little walk rather than doing the set media walk per se. But still, it's an hour with a bunch of different cameras and lenses. There's only so much you can really show. So make sure you've liked and subscribed because we have a few series coming that testing this guy out in big detail will really fit nicely. So click, ding, bell, do it. <laughs>